thought for this uh, opportunity to present our research on the uh, deep dissection of post market uh, How do I advance? Uh, oh, I have a little bit of trouble. Uh, okay. All right, so this is uh, not a uh, formal presentation of uh, FDA. Well, the need for uh, drug safety surveillance has been known for uh, a long time. So we have uh, two goals here. One is from uh, Paracelsus, uh, who is uh, the father of the toxicology. He said, what is there that's not poison? All things are poison, nothing is without poison. So the cells determine the thing is a poison. Then we have uh, this uh, from the great French writer, uh, Molière. To undergo treatment, you have to be very healthy because apart from your sickness, you have to withstand the medicine. So the need for, uh, for surveillance of uh, drug adverse event has been well known, uh, at least from uh, Middle Ages. And it's uh, very important to have a surveillance after the drug has been put on market uh, because, uh, well, even though the drug safety is uh, in um, integrated with uh, the whole process of drug development, but in the beginning you work with animals, then in clinical trials you might have uh, several hundred uh, patients. But once you're on the market, potentially you might have a million patients. So it's not surprising that some um, adverse event will pop up that you don't know about in the clinical stage. So uh, with the surveillance problem, we try to detect um, this adverse event, new adverse event early, identify risk factors, and then improve uh, uh, patient's outcome. Uh, an important part of this uh, surveillance effort is uh, the FDA adverse event reporting system up here. So, so then we have uh, uh, experts in this audience that is, um, uh, have done good work this year. Uh, here's the database that contains Montpelier's uh, adverse event report uh, to FDA. Majority from manufacturers, but also from uh, doctors and uh, consumers. In fact, everybody, if they have an adverse uh, event when taking drugs, can uh, submit a report. There are uh, more than 90 million reports and counting, so it's a very rich data source to mine for uh, safety signals and has been uh, used very diligently by FDA. But analyze this uh, first data is uh, not without challenge. Uh, first, there's data quality issues like missing values, uh, drug name, uh, duplication, terminology, uh, <laughs> it by itself does not establish causation. Then uh, from a statistical point of view, a big problem is there's uh, really no uh, denominator because uh, in the database you can find out uh, uh, maybe a thousand patients get sick when taking drug A, but there's no way to know how many people are taking that drug at that time. So there's no denominator, and that means that most of statistical methods cannot be used uh, directly. Uh, but fortunately, uh, there are a lot of people have been working on this uh, problem. They have some smart ideas to get around this uh, no denominator problem. Uh, one way you can do this is uh, based on this uh, conditions table. So if you uh, make a table of uh, AE and no AE and the other side is drug and no drug, then uh, if you're assuming there's the independence between AE and the drug, then by standard theory, the expected uh, value of the count, this NIJ, will be this uh, value EIJ, that's rho total times column total divided by grand total. So uh, this gives you the baseline, then if you are uh, assuming a Poisson model under independence of assumption, uh, if you observe a count that's uh, much higher than is the EIJ, you might have a safety signal. So this is the idea of applying the several methods I listed here, especially this uh, actual ratio test that's determined by Huang, um, the Giga, and the uh, Divari at FDA. So that's used very, very well uh, for mining safety signals. And uh, it is also uh, implemented in uh, open FDA. Yeah, in fact, everybody here can go on the open FDA website and try to explore the uh, safety signals from FAIRS data. Of course, if you generate safety signals, then it um, uh, does not uh, guarantee causation. So somebody probably has to look at the folders and then maybe go to a Bradford Hill uh, right here to establish causal effect. And today, I will um, mainly focus on how to expand and improve uh, signal uh, generation. So the challenge is how we can do better uh, to uh, monitor drug safety. Uh, for this, uh, we think there are three uh, things that we potentially could do. 
Uh, why is uh, you, the current resources better? So that's what we propose to do a deep detection of uh, fair data. So we can have a detailed signal um, detection for subpopulations like different sections, different age groups, and so on. Uh, the other is the link with other database and survey efforts. I will talk a little bit about our um, uh, uh, plan to link with Hing data. And finally, bring other resources like literature, social media, uh, EHR data. Because uh, this one we just started uh, uh, mostly this year. So um, uh, work we have been focused on the first part of so what I will uh, present here. Well, the idea of deep dissection really uh, coming from the uh, precision medicine. Because uh, some population analysis is uh, bread and butter for precision medicine. Because uh, people all, all know that uh, drugs, some drugs so uh, efficacy only if you look at some uh, subgroups. So if you look at the general population, the efficacy won't be significant. And uh, in toxicology, people have a catch up with the idea that uh, some adverse event might be uh, disproportionately uh, appear in a certain subpopulation. So I have a picture here on the right. You see that tall gentleman, I think most people can recognize that's a liquor great, uh, Wales Chamberlain. And uh, the shorter one is uh, Willie Schumacher. In fact, he's a, a giant in professional horse racing, so he held the professional record uh, for many years. So this picture uh, elastic it uh, wonderfully of the huge variation in human public. Uh, but you think about it, the problem is uh, if uh, Will Chamberlain and Will Schumacher are going to pick uh, the same drug, then uh, you, they might get exactly the same recommendation of uh, doses and other um, uh, instructions uh, for that drug. Then just look at the picture, you probably, um, this doesn't, it's not optimal. So probably they have a, a different profile for adverse event if they're taking the same, same drug. So that's the idea behind the deep dissection. So we can uh, look, dive into the data, look at the different subpopulations, like the sex, age, then uh, we might have a, uh, be able to recover signals that you will overlook in a general uh, analysis of drug AE association, then we can uh, investigate this signal further with subpopulations. So for uh, example, what we'll do, we use uh, uh, drug and use the liver injury as an example. So the data is an uh, uh, important concern in drug development. It's a major cause of drug withdrawals. And a lot of cases are not detected in very uh, technical studies, and also the outcome could be severe. Uh, to define daily inferiors, we use the 53 liver-related uh, major terms. So if the report have a, a adverse outcome in one of these uh, 53 uh, major terms, we consider it, it is a daily event. So we collected a report uh, in um, uh, 2012 to 2016, and then processed with uh, this illness uh, pipeline uh, that's developed by uh, Stanford Group. Because I've uh, talked about there's uh, data quality issues, uh, like duplication missing data, so we uh, process with this pipeline and also use some uh, custom uh, methods to get uh, the data data. And uh, if you think about it, data is a very complex uh, event. So here is an example of uh, all the biological pathways that are involved in data. Um, but if you uh, do an abstraction, you can think of uh, uh, this way. Uh, if your drug causing delay will activate these uh, biological processes, then uh, the host factor will uh, uh, modulate this biological process, host factor including uh, sex, age, and others. Uh, with uh, certain statistical methods, then you can detect the effect of uh, uh, host factors. And if this uh, drug does not cause, uh, cause delay, it won't activate this biological process, of course, you won't detect any uh, host factor effect. So that means uh, with these tests, not only uh, we will uh, can uh, learn about the uh, effect of host factors on data, we also can um, explore the signal, data signal in a different way because you know, then it will be different. Uh, our ranking will be different from a general test. Uh, what we use here is uh, uh, look at the sex disparity uh, first. Your sex disparity is also 
now they recognize it's an important problem for our drug safety. So a female might be more vulnerable to adverse uh, drug reaction, but males certainly could be more severely affected by some drugs. And uh, uh, in withdrawal drugs, there's a study to show that in drugs withdrawal, there's the open sex disparity. And but how to uh, detect sex uh, disparity with regard to city? Well, that's uh, what we do is that we modify the lactoritual test that we just uh, talked about a little bit earlier. If you recall, in a lactoritual test, uh, we have a contingency table of a drug and AE, then we derive a baseline. So now we want to uh, look at sex. That means that we still have a two by two table, but one side uh, is uh, sex, as male or female. But the other side could be either drug or AE. So in this case, uh, so we have two tests to do it. So this is test one. Test one is based on this table. That's uh, sex versus drugs. Whether you are taking this drug and not taking this drug, whether you have uh, when, when you have data. So this is uh, test is uh, uh, find the drug seems that uh, have uh, unusual sex uh, disparity patterns when compared with other drugs that uh, has data. So once you do a uh, uh, two by two conditions table, then by standard theory, you can also derive expected values uh, for these uh, uh, two counts for male and female. And if the two count is uh, much uh, different from expected count, then uh, you, you say there might be a sex disparity there. Uh, again, when we're assuming a Poisson distribution, then uh, we can derive a like the ratio test and uh, maximize over all the drugs get the test statistic, since it won't be a standard uh, test uh, like the ratio statistic, uh, we have to use the Monte Carlo simulation uh, to do the uh, calibration for the p-value. So you can have a p-value to determine when it is effect sex disparity is significant. So that, uh, these details I'm happy to discuss for anybody that um, uh, interested in our But when we have a like the ratio test uh, in this setting, so this is what we call test one. Test two is uh, that you make the table the other way. So there's a still sex, of course, but the other side is AE. So whether you have DD or not have DD. So this is, uh, let's say, you take a drug, let's see, then look at it, whether the DD as an adverse outcome show an unusual sex pattern compared to all the other uh, AE for that drug. So this is another way taking uh, uh, taking out the drug seems to have a sex disparity. Then uh, again, it's still a two by two condition table. You can um, uh, derive a similar like the ratio test uh, almost uh, the same way, but uh, with, with uh, the change of a subscript. So we have two uh, tests for sex disparity. And if you look at um, if you look at uh, the results, I show a little bit here. So this is for test one. Then this is uh, the top uh, 20 drugs that uh, we uh, uh, think have a, a significant, uh, significant uh, sex disparity uh, by test one. So the, the first one you see is the interferon beta one alpha. Uh, that's uh, open use of a multiple version. So that that's. Uh, as I have been uh, some evidence that uh, male and female have a uh, different adverse event uh, profile. So there's uh, plenty of them, so I won't uh, go through details. As you can see, the common thing is uh, that uh, most of these drugs have uh, backed by clinical evidence that they have uh, related to a drug-induced liver injury. And uh, more than half are not ranked as high due to a generic uh, test. You do a euro drug AE uh, like ratio test um, without considering sex. You might uh, still detect most of them, but they will rank will be much lower, tend to be much lower. So they then use uh, uh, the sex disparity test. You will uh, prioritize this uh, this drug uh, first for um, for the investigation uh, in a sex uh, specific population, and uh, it is enriched with autoimmune drugs. So that's uh, interesting because we know that the male and female have uh, different autoimmune uh, response uh, mechanisms. So the, this is uh, test one. Well, test two is uh, sort of uh, similar. 
Uh, but it's a different list of drugs if you compare. So the list of drugs are different, but all uh, still the, they are uh, backed by mostly backed by clinical evidence. And also you you want to rank them high if you do a general uh, drug AE association test. So uh, this, this, these two tests pick up drugs that are specifically for uh, sex disparity you can that uh, investigate further in them. Uh, uh, different populations, and uh, also enriched with autoimmune drugs and anti uh, biotics in this case. So this is for sex. And uh, this test is pretty general. You can uh, easily swap sex for uh, age groups. So age groups we uh, define as people above 50 years old and people below 50 years old. Again, you can uh, test for, um, uh, uh, for disparity uh, the, uh, for adverse events between uh, older people and the younger people, so that here is a test one. So again, most are backed by clinical evidence and you want to pick up uh, from a general test. And the test two will have a similar problem for that. Yeah, so because this is uh, uh, something we started this year, so we haven't really uh, delved into uh, sex uh, specific population, so that's what we use next. But that, um, uh, in general, for this section is a novel test. We have a novel test for a health sector and uh, can uh, detect drugs must be overlooked in common uh, tests, ignoring a uh, health sector. And it, this can complement uh, current available, uh, available tests in signal generation. And uh, possibly we can uh, issue safety specific, uh, safety signals specific to uh, uh, subpopulation like uh, uh, sex groups and age groups. But uh, here, in fact, uh, provide relatively few uh, uh, um, sparse information on health factors. If we have a electronic health record, we can do more, certainly, about it. So I just, um, before I finish, I just use uh, probably one minute to uh, uh, go over uh, what, uh, what we want to do with uh, other things uh, for this uh, project. One is uh, that we might uh, link with other databases. So here, certainly, is a very rich. But uh, we can uh, also incorporate other databases like uh, uh, WHO WIDIBIS, which have uh, 20 million reports from uh, uh, a lot of countries. Uh, electronic health records certainly uh, have a more rich data for um, health sectors. And uh, an interesting thing we want to do is uh, to link with NHINS data. NHINS data is a very important survey of, uh, uh, run by CDC that uh, look at uh, the health of the U.S. based uh, population for environmental exposure, nutrition status, and the treatment of disease. So each year they try to target 5,000 individuals, and uh, they do uh, Israel also physical exam. What we find interesting is that they enhance, they ask people what kind of a drug they have. Uh, you see that uh, in this time period they identified maybe 600 to 700 drugs by uh, people taking that. Uh, participate in hand hand. What makes this interesting is that in fairness, I have talked about some major um, drawbacks that you do not have a denominator information. So I don't know how many people are taking that drive. Uh, so we use this baseline calculation to try to get around it. But if we look at the we might get estimated of a denominator for some uh, very commonly used drugs, not for all the drugs because the sample is not big enough. But for uh, some of most commonly used drugs, might get a handle of the denominator so we can uh, try to improve what we did with the uh, uh, fair data modeling. So this uh, also can uh, be a problem like for utilizing other surveys. Uh, you can, uh, we can sort of look at other sources that uh, uh, social media data like other group has uh, in this channel also talked about it. And we want to look at the variable that uh, can come in drugs, uh, biological pathway, or graphical information and lifestyle. So the, 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 the goal is to have an integrated system with multiple stream data and also we uh, look at uh, sub uh, specifically. So that, that certainly will take a lot of effort to uh, get there. Uh, so uh, this is, as I said, is, uh, uh, our director has a name, the Air, Air Force, that's uh, Air Research Force. And uh, we have a biostatistics team here. So you are, we are at uh, National Center for Toxical Research. Uh, you're welcome to contact me if you have questions and we have our team member here. 
and uh, Dr. Wei Dong is the uh, division director. So. All right, so I think that's uh, a good place. So uh, thank you for listening.